inside out and call me an Eiffel Turner. It's an actual fully fledged comedy. I know I sound incredulous, but it's bloody rare nowadays. Feels like anything approaching comedy needs to be lumped in with another genre. Marvel movies doing the action comedy. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves doing fantasy comedy. Barbie came close, but even then it wasn't full comedy. Seems they went out of fashion in the mid to late 2000s, when you still get Ben Stiller et al. doing the frat pack thing, or the occasional American Pie movie jerking off a dog or something. Here we have an uh, all-out comedy, yay! But from the same guy who brought us me, myself and Irene, stuck on you and a staggeringly overrated There's Something About Mary. Let's yay. Then again, that's the wonderful thing about comedy. It's all subjective. What one person finds funny may not land for someone else, unless it's Mrs. Brown's boys. Then subjective is out the window. If you find that funny, you're just wrong. Thankfully, Ricky Stinky is funny. It's sure as hell not going to land for everyone. Depends how much of a laugh you get from a near constant barrage of penis jokes. Could have been worse. James Franco was originally going to star in it, so at least this way, the only penis is flying around with jokes, and not his being forced to dumb winning teenagers. To be fair, if you're not sure if this home is right for you, then note that about eight seconds into the movie is your first poop joke. So, if that's not for you, then Fred's just streaming on Paramount at the moment, your highness. It's not the most highbrow in any sense. The whole movie feels like a sitcom to barter with mistaken identity, everyone lying to everyone else, and plans suddenly going awry, with a slight lean towards vertigo slash single white female creepy life invasion thrown in, but with jobs and japes to make it less creepy. Amazingly, this movie had six scriptwriters. That means it took one more person to write than the data remembers seminal album Homesick, and this movie ain't no homesick. It's fun, but it's absolutely chock full of cliches, which isn't always a bad thing. There's actually a sweetness to the movie, weirdly, considering the non-stop lying to partners, show chortles, and a delightful scene involving a silver cutter. The fact that this movie works is almost entirely down to the comedy skills of Mr. John Cena. Continuing his campaign to become the best comedy actor working at the moment, he takes every crass go net gag and runs with it. Even scenes which absolutely shouldn't work, like the musical montage of jerking jests or the part of the movie where it's the boardroom scene from Liar Liar, but 45 minutes long. Cena's charm is undeniable. Combined with the supporting cast of Zac Efron's straight man and William H. Macy sacrificing what dignity he had left after being in Wild Hogs for the sake of comedy, it all makes for a surprisingly enjoyable time. It's crass, immature, and has enough sausage stickers to keep a group of 14-year-old boys repeating them to each other for the next 18 months. It was also really bloody funny, and while Cena should get almost the entire credit, the script is engaging and amusing. Weirdly, it's the same guy who also wrote Green Book. Thankfully, we don't have any white savior trash to wade through. It's just witty witticisms, wang wisecracks, and prick quips. Uh, Todger. <laughs>